Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to do just a chill, like testing new makeup video. Well, makeup that's new to me. Um, it's actually some things that I just hauled in my last video and also some things that I've had for a while but I haven't used yet. So I pretty much have enough to do a full face except for foundation and concealer because I don't have any new products um, in those categories. So um, I think we should just get started because it might be a bit long as usual. The first thing I'm going to use is the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. I mentioned in my last video that I was wearing it um, in that video and I didn't like the smell of it but I did like the effect so I'm going to try it again today. So this is, as the name suggests, a smoothing pore covering primer. It doesn't say anything else really on here. It just says top secret for perfect makeup. And Touch and Soul is a Korean brand. You can get it at Sephora. But this is actually from my mom's BoxyCharm. <laughs> she gave it to me. So I think I'll just go in with one pump to start with. So it looks like this. It's one of those like silicone-y primers. But it is more like gel-like than those primers usually are. The smell is just... I can't get over it. I think I'll have to give it back to my mom. She can try it. Because it's too much. I said in that video it smells like the soap in public bathrooms. I'm sorry, but that's what it smells like. But I guess it does like visibly blur the skin. I think you can even tell a bit, even though this lighting is horrendous. But, I just can't with the smell of this. And I still like my other primer better. Um, my Coconut Skin Smoothie Primer from First Aid Beauty, which smells delicious. So, yeah. And to be honest, I don't really care for pore filling primers. I don't find that I really need them. The only place that my pores are pretty large is like on my nose and right here um, but usually I find it that gets covered anyway with foundation and whatnot so yeah not my favorite but yeah you can tell like it feels soft on the skin so I think I've decided I don't really like this um, yeah, that's too bad. I was excited about it, but I just can't deal with the smell of that. So, um, I also have a new lip balm to try. I hauled this in one of my previous videos. It's the Ink Credible Jelly Shot um, Lip Quencher. So, it has a flower inside, if you can see that. Can you focus? Yeah, you can see it there, I guess. But it's just like so pretty. And there's like some gold specks in it. It smells like candy. I have never, I have yet to use this, so I will use it today. Oh, it feels weird. <laughs> It does feel like jelly. Hmm. Interesting. I had to put lip balm on because my lips are super dry. So like I said, I don't have new foundation or concealer. So I'm going to put that on off camera. You've seen it before. I'm just going to use my Tarte gel foundation and my two concealers, my Kat Von D Lock It Concealer for spot concealing and I use the Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Sealer um, for under eye and highlighting. So I will be back. 
Okay, so I'm back with my foundation and concealer on. I do have this Becca product to try. It is the Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. So, it, oh, it's kind of dirty. <laughs> Reflective packaging also. But it's like a white powder like this. Um, I'm gonna try using this under my eye. I guess I'll just use my sponge and press it in. I don't know. I should not use too much. I don't think this is a baking powder per se. <laughs> Did that brighten my under eye? I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to keep using this. First of all, I don't love this concealer. So, already that's like not the best way to test a new product on a different product that you don't like. So, yeah. It's kind of accentuating the wrinkles under my eyes, if you can tell, and making them look pretty crepey. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like this. Does it say anything on here? No. Under eye brightening setting powder. Maybe it's more like a powder that you would just dust on with the brush. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see what it would do. Because normally I do apply powder with my sponge. Um, usually I put a lot more and I let it sit, but yeah, like I said, I don't think that's a baking powder. So yeah, I guess we'll see how it holds up. So I think I'll move on to my eyes um for my eyeshadow i have this palette from mac this is the semi sweet times nine eyeshadow palette i got this a long time ago and i never used it but i really love these shades especially this like mustardy shade I think that's what like drew me to it the most um, and these are all matte shades so we're doing a matte eye look today I do like that there is this cream shade here because if you guys saw my basically any of my other videos you know that I always go in with that kind of shade um, to start with and I'm not gonna use a primer today um, because I put concealer on and yeah I don't feel like it so <laughs> so first off that is very powdery if you can see that yeah but um that's fine with me because some of my favorite shadows are the Anastasia shadows and those are like the most powdery shadows ever. <laughs> as long as they blend and they're pigmented, I don't care if there's powderiness. So far, so good. I should probably zoom you in. And for my crease, I want to use this big fluffy brush from Alamar Cosmetics. And I'm going to go in with the second shade there, this one here. Do these have names? No. Oh wait, yes they do. Yeah, so that shade was called Drawing a Blank. And this one is called Bamboo. So I'm going to go in with that basically all over the lid and the crease and blend it up. Yeah, so that shade is pretty light on my skin tone, like it kind of blends in a bit. 
but that's fine for a transition shade. But I do want some more depth in the crease. So I'm going to go in with a smaller brush, this brush here, and I'm going to use this middle shade, which is like a true brown shade. Well, yeah, maybe a bit, no, that's like pretty much a brown. <laughs> Um, it's called Mocha Minded. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is mm, a lot darker than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh dear. Well, at least it's blending. Now I have to make this one look as dark. <laughs> That's the thing when you go in with too much shadow you can't really turn back but if you go in light-handed you can build it up I was just expecting that to be not as pigmented I guess okay well I guess we can fix it later um, I'm gonna go all over the lid now with this shade here to lighten it up <laughs> this is the shade pink sienna that doesn't look pink at all to me it looks more like a cool tone like a taupe kind of let's see i think i'm just gonna go back in with this big brush and try and blend everything together. This is like a super quick eyeshadow look. Like something um, I do like on the weekend when like I want to put some eyeshadow but I don't want to do like a glam look. I would do something like this. I don't know if it's me that's like bad at blending <laughs> or if that dark shade is like a bit patchy because I'm having trouble with it here if you can see there's like it's sticking down here I'm gonna go in with more of that transition shade this one bamboo Try and blend that out up here. And I didn't want it so dark in the corner here. But I guess there's no going back now. <laughs> I will try and use my highlighter in the inner corner. But overall, not bad. I mean, I guess I, I've had better, but... <laughs> so for the under eye, um, I'm going to go in with the pink sienna shade and just on the outer corner to connect that up here I'm going to go in with the darker shade I'll use this detailing brush this is a Real Techniques large smudge brush and I'm gonna go in lightly with the middle shade mocha minded and instead of like fluffing that out like I did with the other shade, I'm just going to pack it on at first because I don't want it to go everywhere. And then I'll gently <laughs> blend it out. I feel like I could have got this same look but easier with my Smashbox trio it's like a cool tone um, tr 
Montreal. It's in Nudie Pick Fair. I really like this. This has been in my favorites video before. I just don't know what else I would do with this palette. Like, because it's all like matte shades. I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. <laughs> I mean, this is a nice color for the lid. I guess you could do like the grays with that color and maybe the black and do like a smoky eye, but I'm not that advanced, I guess. <laughs> so this will do for now. I got uh, a hair in my eye, so now it's all red. So ignore that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have a new mascara. Well, I do actually, but I don't want to open anymore because I have so many. So I'm just going to put um, this Tardis lash paint. Yeah, Tardis lash paint. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put this on off camera because... Um, like I said, it's not new and I think you guys know how to put mascara on. So there is with the mascara. I do like the tones of the eyeshadow, but like I said, I could have gotten this, um, with my Smashbox trio. And it does look patchy right there. But that could have been my fault too. I think I went in too heavy handed. <laughs> so before I put any other powder on, I have this new product here. If you guys didn't see my last video, I talked about it. It's the Cheeky Stamp from Kaja Blendable Blush. Oh, I have mascara all over my hands somehow. So it looks like this. I'm pretty excited to try this actually. So you have the stamp part in the lid here. It's a heart shape. And then the product is in the bottom. It's like a cushion blush. And I don't think I've ever tried a cream blush before. So I guess we'll see how this goes together. So you just stamp it in. like that. That looks like a lot of product. <laughs> I think, should I zoom me back out? Okay. <laughs> I just always wanted to do that. Okay, well, I guess you need more than one stamp. But now, blend it out with a sponge Ooh, that's a pretty color I might need a little more for the other side <laughs> I really like the shade of this. Did I say what it was? I don't think so. It's the shade 01 Koi. It blended out really easily. But it still kept the pigment. Yeah, I think I like this a lot. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, the thing with these is you have to Put it on before you put your bronzer and highlighter and all other powder products because putting cream on top of powder doesn't usually work. Okay, so I like this. And I guess you just put it back in here even though it's got pigment on it now. Yeah, and you just twist it on. It 
looks like a cute little jar stamp thing. Okay, and for bronzer, I found this bronzer in my collection. I actually forgot that I had it. Um, it must have been from BoxyCharm at some point because it's from Pure Cosmetics and Pure is like always in BoxyCharm. I think they're like friends or something, <laughs> the people that own BoxyCharm and Pure. Um, but yeah, this is the Mineral Glow Bronzing Powder. I don't think there's a shade. It says, using the powder brush, sweep over the face and neck, either alone or over 4-in-1 mineral makeup. So this might be kind of dark for me. It's like this. But if I go in with a light hand, it might be okay. Um, and it has a bit of shimmer in it. I guess you would say it's like a satin finish, like it's not a matte bronzer. So I'm going to use my Beige Cosmetics Duo Fiber Brush so that I don't apply too much product. Pretty good so far. Not too dark. I think it looks nice. I mean, as long as the bronzer isn't orange, they all kind of look the same to me. <laughs> yeah, and there's no glitter, so I like it. So I forgot to do my brows as usual, and I'm just going to do them off camera because I don't have a new brow product, and I'm using what I use in like every video, my Hourglass Fiber Brow Gel in Soft Brunette. Do you guys like doing your brows? Because I don't. <laughs> Honestly, I only remember to do them because when I have a full face of makeup on, my brows look so sparse. Like you can see this one. But usually I don't pay like any attention to my brows. That's why I like this product because it's just, you just comb it through and you're done. And it never like gets too heavy and it's not like a stiff gel or anything so yeah I really like this product so that's all I'm gonna do for my brows and for lips I have a new product it's the buxom full-on plumping lip cream but the new ones that have the coconut scent um, which I'm kind of confused about because online the new ones are called Wanderlust Plumping Lip Cream, but this set doesn't say Wanderlust anywhere. But it does say um, Refreshing Tingling Sensation and Intoxicating Tropical Vibes. So I'm pretty sure it's the new one. And the shade is Seychelles Breeze. I did try this already in my last video, but I was already wearing lipstick, so I didn't get the full effect of the shade of this. So let's try. It does smell really good. It doesn't smell like too strong either, which I like because when it's a lip product and it's really strong, you know, because it's close to your nose, you would smell it like all day. This smells really nice. I love coconut scents. It's a nice nude shade. It's kind of like a peachy undertone I guess and it does have the tingling tingling sensation that buxom glosses usually do I really like this color this would be good for just like throwing on you know with mascara and just lip gloss kind of day I think that's all I wanted to try today 
yeah I mean it's a very simple look nothing too exciting but I just wanted to show you guys some of the products that I hauled to let you know what I think about them so overall just to quickly go through everything uh, I don't like the smell of this but I will say my skin does look pretty smooth especially like right here um, and that yeah and where I have like the largest pores they actually look pretty good by the way if you guys are ever wondering why I always have two red marks here it's because I wear glasses um, in real life I don't wear them on YouTube because the light reflects off them and you can't even see my eyes so like it's weird but yeah that's why those marks like never go away unfortunately but anyway yeah I'm gonna give this back to my mom I really just wanted to try it because everyone on YouTube's like raving about it but it's weird I haven't heard anyone ever talk about the smell of this and it's like so strong to me so I don't know if like this is like a bad one or what but I'm gonna give it back to her and see what she thinks maybe it's just something in it that I don't like my body doesn't like <laughs> I don't know but yeah unfortunately the effect it gives is nice but I can't deal with the smell of that what else this Becca under eye brightening setting powder I mean, I think it did brighten my under eye because it looks pretty bright there. Even though this light is bright in itself, but I, it does look like it did something. Um, and I guess it didn't, like the powderiness isn't that bad after all. I don't know, I feel like it is a bit crepey, especially on this eye. I don't know if you can even see yeah like this line here is like very pronounced that could also be because my under eye is dry i don't know but yeah i'll keep using this and see um if it does anything the thing about products like this is like they add an extra step to your routine and if you're someone like me who prefers like a more simple routine it's just like kind of annoying to have to do something else so if it's something that doesn't give like a very noticeable effect i'm not as likely to keep using it but yeah i guess i'll give you an update on that um what else the eyeshadow i don't know this eye is really bothering me see right there it's like unblendable and I didn't want to put more because I was scared <laughs> uh, it's already darker than I wanted it to be but yeah I mean I only used these four shades which are the most like simple ones um, but yeah I just didn't know how to incorporate the other shades but I will try and use this again because, like I said, this is like one of my favorite shades in the palette and I didn't use it. So I will try to do another look with this and let you guys know. Um, the bronzer... I don't know. Yeah. I didn't put in a lot on because I was scared that it was going to be too dark, but it looks good. Um, it's not orange and it's not glittery so that's a plus I really like the cheek stamp it's fun to put on <laughs> and it blended out nicely it doesn't it didn't like um, lift my foundation or anything which is pretty surprising so yeah that is good guys I didn't even put highlight on where am I? Do I have a new highlighter? I don't have new highlighter. So I'm going to use the one that's in my everyday makeup drawer. It's one of my favorites actually. It's the MAC Nutcracker Sweet Peach Face Compact. And the highlighter is called 2-2. It 
looks like this. Unfortunately, this was limited edition for holidays like two years ago. But yeah, if you guys know the extra dimension formula from MAC, that's what this is. So yeah, there's other shades available. I'm going to use a fan brush because I don't want it to be too crazy. Yeah, the reason I noticed I forgot to put highlighter on is because I meant to put some in the inner corner. So I will do that also. I'm going to use my MAC 219 brush. That was just missing for me. So what was I saying? Yeah, and the only other thing, I mean, I can't give you a, like full thoughts on this because it's just a lip balm and then I put lip gloss over it. But I do like the way it felt. It wasn't sticky or thick or anything like that. Um, oh, and by the way, it's called X Revenge, which is funny. But yeah, I mean, it's obviously a bit gimmicky. There's like a flower in a lip balm. <laughs> Uh, and gold flex but yeah I like the idea and I like that it's called jelly shot and it did feel like putting like jelly on your lips but not like gross <laughs> I don't know if that's a good description but yeah so I don't know if that's actually hydrating or anything but I do like the um, effect that it gave um, and then the lip gloss which like it's not super new or anything, these Buxom glosses. I feel like they've been around forever. But this is the full-on plumping lip cream. I think these are more pigmented than the regular ones. Um, yeah. And like I said, I love the smell. That's why I bought it. And I like this shade, Seychelles Breeze going to be really nice for spring and summer so yeah I guess that's it yeah I just wanted to test some products with you guys um it wasn't that exciting I guess but yeah if there's anything you want to know more about you want more updates on just let me know below and I hope you liked this video and you liked hanging out with me for a bit. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!